This is Mark Anderson from Kellogg Community College, and we're going to be looking at the second part of Chapter 2, Section 4, which is going to be drawing and graphing some functions here. And we're also going to do some naming the functions from the pictures when we get to the very end of this worksheet here. Now, what we're going to do here is take a look at um, some functions that are going to start off with um, one simple transformation, and then we're going to go from one simple transformation to two, then three. Because what we have uh, with our sinusoidal functions here, we have some kind of sine of x. And what we're going to do first is take a look at some examples that have an amplitude. And then after that, we're going to take a look at some examples that have um, a period or cycle adjustment, which is through um, uh, the Greek letter omega. And then at the very end, we're going to deal with a, um, a vertical uh, shift up or down with um, some letter B, which is going to be our third transformation. Now what I like to do first is I like to um, plot out the um, two cycles of my um, sine wave here. This is called our parent function. So this blue line is going to represent our um, graph here, which is our uh, just sine of x. It's not going to actually uh, be the 3 sine of x because what I will do is apply my transformation in this next picture here um, by using the amplitude of 3. And to do that, I'll kind of make an easy uh, adjustment here to my uh, y-axis. So instead of it going from negative 1 to 1, it's going to go from 3 to negative 3. So the graph will look the same. But it, as I plot my points uh, for this problem, it will actually be uh, three times bigger along the amplitude, which means that the highest and lowest bounds of this picture is going to go from 3 to negative 3 instead of 1 to negative 1. Now, in terms of my picture here, this would be pi uh, and this would be 2 pi. Um, so if every um, tick mark is pi over 2, you can kind of see how I would plug in my dots here. This dot here is the origin, 0, 0, and this would be pi over 2, comma 3. And pi over 2 and pi over 2 make pi, comma 0, because uh, that's the height at that moment. This is going to be 3 pi over 2, comma, negative 3. And this here cycles at 2 pi, comma 0. Um, you can you can graph the rest of these points uh, any way you'd like to. You can um, you know skip to these easy x-intercepts here because this is going to be three pi uh, comma zero and this is going to be four pi comma zero, and these are going to be um, pi shifts here. So this is three pi over two, four pi over two, five pi over two comma uh, three, and this is going to be six pi over two, which is you know three, and this is seven pi over two comma negative 3, and then takes you to 8 pi over 2, which is 4. And the, the last instruction here is to determine the domain and range of each function. Now the domain of this function is going to be all real numbers, because there um, are no breaks in between there. So it, it, in terms of sets, x is, is all real. Uh, you can see it this way. You can also see it with set notation, like this, where x is real. And then in terms of y, y is going to be between negative 3 and 3, um, so we would write our range with y, and it's implied since this is starting with y, we are talking about our range, y is between negative 3 and 3 inclusive, because we can actually get to the 3 like so. Now this was an example that I used domain and range with um, the set notation. I can actually use interval notation too. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with my uh, sine of x, or just y equals sine of x. So it's middle, high, middle, low, middle. That's my first cycle there to get me to 2 pi. So here's 2 pi. Uh, so every interval here is going to be in half pi units. So middle, high, middle, low, middle, like so. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to um, uh, look at changing this uh, to a 3x instead of an x, which means this graph is going to get three times faster. Now, to help me out here a little bit, I'm going to put in all of my important points. This is 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi uh, at my x-intercepts here, and this is going to be pi over 2. This is going to be, uh, let's see, th this is 2 pi over 2, this is 3 pi over 2, this is 4 pi, 5 pi over 2, 
6 pi, 7 pi over 2. Now, one of two ways you can do this is you can multiply each of these by the phase shift, or the, um, the uh, omega, I should say, not phase shift, but we should multiply by, uh, divide by the omega. Because um, if you remember, if you have 2 pi being your period, you divide by your omega, and your omega in this case is 3. So each of these gets divided by 3. Now, um, what to, to make this a little bit easier, I, I like multiplying instead of you know taking our 2 pi and dividing by 3, I like taking our 2 pi and multiplying by 1 third. Now, if I look at the first fraction right there, I'm going to multiply that by 1 third, and it becomes pi over 6. See, I'm actually not going to be drawing my picture three times faster. I'm actually going to be drawing my picture in the exact same way, but by changing my points, it's going to be represented as three times faster um, by its locations here. Um, I know this isn't as dynamic as actually seeing the graph shrink, but a graphing calculator would give you a better effect of this. So, and then um, this is going to be my uh, pi over 6, comma, uh, 1, because we haven't changed the amplitude, we've changed the, uh, the period here. Uh, so this is going to be pi over 3, because pi times 1 third is pi over 3, comma, 0. And then 3 pi over 2 times 1 over 3, this is going to be my pi over 2, comma, negative 1. And then taking me to this first cycle here, this is 2 pi times uh, 1 third, so this is 2 pi over 3, comma, 0. Okay, now that's one way to do it, is to take each one of these little fractions here and multiply by 1 third. Another way you can do it is you can take a look at the first fraction, which is a sixth, pi over 6. And basically just count, since all the intervals are the same, just count by sixth. So pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6. This would be 5 pi over 6, comma 1. 6 pi over 6, so this would be pi here, comma 0. This would be 7 pi over 6, comma negative 1. And this would be 8 pi over the 6, but the 8 pi over 6 is reducible to 4 pi thirds comma, zero. Let's do domain and range. Uh, domain is going to be uh, between negative infinity and positive infinity. That's my domain, or all real numbers, another way to do it. I'm using interval notation here. And our range is going to be between negative one and one, using brackets there to symbol, to, sim, to, <laughs> to show that it is, um, you know, is, it, it, it is uh, going to include negative one and one. And there's that negative at that cosine, and we know from our even-odd rules that this is the same thing as cosine of 2x. So like problem 16 above it, um, or excuse me, the like problem, um, oh, weird, the numbering got off here a little bit. Um, like problem, uh, yeah, 16 above it. Uh, this is this is uh, a little bit uh, off there, or 14 above it. Um, excuse me. Uh, this is the same thing. Sorry, I'm looking at a, a old worksheet while I'm working on here this year. So let's go and graph the cosine unchanged. So this is going to be cosine of x. So high, low, high, middle, low, middle, high for my first cycle at 2 pi, and then high, middle, low, middle, high for my second cycle. So there we go. All right, so what's going to happen here is we are going to look at um, changing this to a negative 2. Now see, oh, or just a, a 2. So this graph is going to get, instead of 3 times faster, it's going to get twice as fast. And we're going to go all the way to 4 pi. Now, uh, the way that I'm going to do this is that I know this is pi over 2. I'm going to first draw my graph the exact same way as before. So instead of multiplying to get my correct cycle here by all of these numbers, I'm going to do the first interval and then use that as my baseline. So pi over 2 is this dot right here, or the unit of this graph. Pi over 2 divided by omega, which is the same thing as flipping as 1 over 2. So what we have here is the graph is going to go to a fourth each time. So this is going to be pi over a 4. So instead of this being pi over 2, this is pi over 4. So this right here, which used to be pi, is now going to be um, pi over 2. So this is pi over 4, 
this is pi over 2, so this is 1 fourth, 2 fourths, which is 1 half, 3 fourths, so this is 3 pi over 4, and this is 4 fourths, so this is going to be pi. Then this is 5 fourths, 5 fourths pi, 6 fourths, and 6 fourths is 3 pi over 2, 7 fourths pi, and then this is 8 fourths, or 2 pi. And then we just pull, plug in our numbers. This is 0 comma 1, pi over 4 comma 0, pi over 2 comma negative 1, 3 pi over 4 comma 0. Way up here, this is pi comma 1, 5 pi over 4 comma 0, 3 pi over 2 comma negative 1, 7 pi over 4 comma 0, and 2 pi comma 1. So the way I like doing it is figuring out how wide is that one gap and then move by that gap. It, it also requires you to kind of do some mental gymnastics with fractions too, which is never a bad thing. So let's look at our domain and range. Our domain in this case is going to be, I'll go to set notation, x is real, and our range is going to be where y is between negative 1 and 1 inclusive, so we need to have that uh, less than or equal to under there. Okay, let's look at the next problem, and the next problem um, is going to be our first um, requiring three movements. So let's uh, work on this and see how this turns out here. We're going to first draw our unchanged cosine of x. So this is going to be high, middle, low, middle, high. This is going to be our, it's a little smaller here because I wanted to get in three graphs on the same line, so this is going to be uh, 2 pi here. That's pi in the middle. And high, middle, low, middle, high again. So that right there brings us to 3 pi and 4 pi. Okay, so there's our cosine wave. And what we're going to do is draw the same wave again. Uh, except that instead of it being as high as 1 and negative 1, it's going to go from 2 to negative 2. Some of you may decide to skip this step as you do your homework. You just take care of the amplitude in the first step. And I think that is a, a very noble function once you've done a couple of the problems earlier on in the homework that just deal with the, um, just deal with, uh, the amplitude. So you can save yourself a step here if you just start with this. Now, noticing that this is a fourth, so this is going to go a fourth as fast, that means it's going to be stretched out. So we're going to take our first mark, which is pi over 2 here. And again, I strongly recommend that you follow my procedure about drawing the graph exactly the same way, but let the points do the talking. And if you really want to see the graphical difference between these, you're going to bust out your graphing calculator and see that model drawn. So this is going to be 2 and negative 2. So again, we're going to take a look at our pi over 2. And what we're going to do is divide by our omega, and our omega is 1 fourth. But dividing by 1 fourth is the same thing as multiplying by 4 over 1. So if we multiply by 4 over 1, we're going to get an answer of the simplify to make 2. You're going to get an answer of 2 pi. So that means every single unit is 2 pi instead of pi over 2. So that would make this 4 pi. That would make this 6 pi, 8 pi, 10 pi, 12 pi, and 14 pi, finally ending with 16 pi. Now we plug in our points. This is 0 comma 2, 2 pi comma 0, 4 pi comma negative 2, 6 pi comma 0, 8 pi comma 2, 10 pi comma 0, 12 pi comma negative 2, 14 pi comma 0. Whoa! Screwed that up there. I shouldn't have a parenthesis there. It should be a comma 0. Sorry that looks so bad. I'll rewrite it. 14 pi comma 0. Yeah, slightly better. And 16 pi comma 2. So there it is. There's your wave with all of your points. Now let's do our, let's do um, set notation again. So our domain is going to be x is real. 
and our range is going to be y is between negative 2 and 2, including both 2 and negative 2. Okay, that looks great. All right, moving on to problem 18, another triple here. And this is going to be a nice problem with a negative 4 for my amplitude. So again, for these problems, I'm going to start off with the sine wave. So under the first, I'll let me put above the first picture, let's call this the sine of the sine of x. So low, high, or middle, high, middle, low, middle, there's my first wave to 2 pi, and middle, high, middle, low, middle, there's my second wave to 4 pi. So this is my two cycles as the homework recommends. Again, I'm using mine and positives just because I feel the negative ones are pretty simple you just look at the other side alright so middle high middle low and we got this set out here we're going to now um, apply the negative 4 so this is going to be a positive 4 and this is going to be a negative 4 um, this is um, the same thing this this is negative stay here stays here with the even odd functions so that means we're gonna go middle low middle high middle so the negative changes the sine wave and then here we go down low above high down low so this negative 4 changes the sine wave like so all right now we're gonna plug in uh, this is pi over 2 and again I'm gonna use my technique this of of this uh, period right there I'm gonna change that take that 1 8 I'm gonna take my period which is uh, pi over 2, take that first little part of it, and I'm going to divide by the omega, divide by the 1 eighth. But dividing by an eighth is the same thing as multiplying by uh, 8 over 1. So we're really slowing this down. This is going to be, um, again, uh, I would strongly recommend you just copy the picture. Whoops, sorry, that doesn't belong there. Copy the picture from the previous picture before it. So it's the same picture as before, but the points will do the talking. If you really want to see the transformation um, and how it looks differently, get a graphing calculator and see it that way. So this pi over 2 multiplied by the 8 over 1, which is the same thing as dividing by the omega, this is going to mean that this is 4 pi. So this thing is really, really, really slow. And that means every tick mark is going to be 4 pi, so this is 4 pi comma negative 4. This is 8 pi comma 0. This up here is 12 pi comma positive 4. I know that looks like a negative there. Let me change that. 4 pi comma 12 pi comma 4. I forgot my pi there. Uh, this down here, this is going to be, um, let's see, 4, 8, 12, 16 pi comma 0. Woo, that's a slow graph. This is 20 pi comma negative 4. 20 pi comma negative 4 and this here back in the middle this is going to be 24 pi comma 0 and at the top is 28 pi comma 4 back to the bottom here 32 pi comma 0 Oof. all right so now what we have here is we're gonna have the domain and range let me use interval notation just to shake it up a little bit interval notation the domain is going to be from negative infinity to positive infinity there are no gaps in the sine wave and this is going to be here uh, let's see here this is going to be negative uh, 4 to, to 4 comma there's no uh, there's no inequalities needed in interval notation Anderson so negative 4 to 4 all right, I'm going to move this to the middle here a little bit because I'd like to talk about, hey, look at this, a shift uh, using cos, uh, you know, kind of the same thing before, but we're going to actually do a horizontal and vertical shift here. I'm going to talk about, I mean, a, horiz a vertical shift here, which is kind of neat. Um, so we're first going to draw our cosine of x. So what's nice about this is we're not going to deal with any kind of um, uh, period or cycle shift. So we're just going to start high, middle, low, middle, high. There's our first at 2 pi, then high, middle, low, middle, high. There we go. There's our cosine wave. Again, a little squish just because I want to fit 3 in here. Now what I'm going to do is have my 3 cosine of x right there. So this is 3, negative 3. So high, middle, low, middle, high. 
middle, low, middle, high. And um, again, we are not going to be doing any um, cycle shift here. So I'm not at this moment going to plug in all of my little values. But what's kind of interesting here is we are going to be raising this up too. Now, again, I strongly recommend you still copy the same picture, but we're going to let the points do the talking and let the graphing calculator do the actual shifting of it all because this is going to be a 5 since we're moving this up to and this is going to be a negative 1. So high, middle, low, middle, high, middle, low, middle, high. This is our, our wave, but what happens is if we move the graph up to what this did is it actually lowered our x-axis because if you see that this is two units away like three two one zero now it's five four three two one zero negative one our new zero is two units lower so this is our new x-axis so there's our shift and you can see that because we have kept the graph the same but we move the x-axis which is a lot easier than um, trying to move this up or down based on those special points because what we can do is we can use the same you know spots in the end like this was this is pi so this point way down here is pi comma negative one which is pretty neat this down here this was uh, three pi over here so this is going to be 3 pi comma negative 1 alright and that um, makes this point up here this is 0 comma 5 this point right here um, is going to be pi over 2 comma 2 see everything got moved up two points this normally would have been pi over 2 comma 0 but now it's pi over 2 comma 2 so that means this is 3 pi over 2 comma 2 so this right there is 3 pi over 2 comma 2. This right there at the top, this is going to be, this, this is pi, 3 pi over 2. This is 2 pi comma 5. And if you're kind of looking at like different ways to do this, um, this would be at the end here, 4 pi comma 5, get that out of the way. Or you could just count by halves. This is pi over 2. 2 pi over 2 or 1 pi, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2 or 2 pi. This is 5 pi over 2, comma 2. 6 pi over 2 or 3 pi, 7 pi over 2, comma 0, and then to the end there. Okay, so we've got another graph. This one is going to be the granddaddy of them all because it's going to be a 4 shifter here. So let's see how this racks out. So we're going to start off with this four shifter here. We're going to look at a sine wave. So let's go with, uh, for this first graph, we're going to look at sine of x. So low, high, or middle, high, middle, low, middle. That's the first wave to 2 pi. Middle, high, middle, low, middle. There it is. There's the second wave to 4 pi. Then we're going to go from 4 to negative 4 because of the amplitude. So this is going to be 4 sine of x. So middle, high, middle, low, middle. And that's our first wave to 2 pi. Middle, high, middle, low, middle. And this takes us to 4 pi. Now, uh, the next thing we're going to draw is we're going to draw our 4 s sine of pi over 2 x not the shift of minus 2 here so what this means is I'm still gonna go from 4 to negative 4 but and I'm gonna go middle high middle low middle for my first wave you're gonna see that I'm always gonna do it this way middle high middle low middle for my second wave like so okay so I've got that in there sorry it's a little loopy um the the next piece I'm gonna do is figure out how that changes my period there and or cycle now, now remember the cycle was going to be taking um, taking I'm going to just take this first spot right there which on my graph over here was pi over 2 I'm going to take that interval right there that pi over 2 and divide by my omega if I divide by the omega you see that it's da 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 it's dividing it by itself which is going to be 1 or flipping and multiplying this is 2 pi over 2 pi which makes an answer of 1. So, holy moly, the unit is 1. 
So 1 comma 4 is this first point. And so if this interval is 1, then this is going to have to be 2, 2 comma 0. And this is going to have to be uh, 3 comma negative 4. And now it's important to label all these points because um, as you see, we're going to use these points for comma 0 um, when I do my shift for the last part of the problem. And then this is going to be 5 comma 4. And then we're going to go with 6 comma 0, 7 comma negative 4, and then 8 comma 0. Now what's cool about this is we're going to shift this graph down 2. So this is going to drop to 2 and this is going to drop to negative 6. So I'm applying that shift of 2 to these two places. And if I shift this down 2, that means this graph gets to move, or the x-axis is going to move up. See if I split this 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 to get to my from 0 to 4 and 0 to negative 4. If I go 1, 2, 3, just like I did over here, a little bit better space, I should say, then this is going to be 2, 1, this is going to be my 0. See, your brain wants to think that if you're shifting this down to, that the x-axis is going to move down to, but it doesn't. It actually moves up to. So this is no longer my x-axis, but it's really handy to have because I can go middle, high, middle, low, middle, and here's my sine wave. Middle, high, middle, low, middle. There's my sine wave. Pretty cool. Now, what's going to happen is that all of my points are going to move two down on my y axis. So this is still going to, this is not going to be 0, 0 anymore. This is going to be 0, negative 2. So all the points in the previous problem are going to be the same except your y value is too lower, 1, 2. This is going to be 3, comma, uh, <laughs> this is, sorry, 1, comma, 2. Ah, I skipped it. This is going to be 2, comma, negative 2. This is 3, comma, negative 6. I should be looking back at these points here. This is 4, comma, negative 2. This way up here is 5, comma, 2. This down here is going to be 6, comma, negative 2. This is 7, comma, negative 6. And this here is 8, comma, negative 2. All right, now for the end of this uh, video here is we're going to name the following functions based on the pictures that you're looking at there. Now, uh, what's kind of neat about this is that we're actually going to use um, kind of an inverse uh, function to, to figure out my phase. So let's take a look at this function right here. This is going to be a cosine. And it's I know it's a cosine because it's starting there at the 5. So this is cosine, and this is 5 cosine. And what I have to do is figure out what is the number or the omega. Now, to figure out my omega, what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out how far is it going in one cycle. And it's going to 8 in one cycle. So my cycle is 8, which is the same thing as my 2 pi over omega and what I'm going to do is solve for omega to figure out what goes in front of this x. So using some cross multiplication I'm going to flip my 8 and my w so my or my 8 and my omega so my omega is equal to um, 2 pi divided by 8 and if I simplify that I will get what I should have in front of this which is going to be just pi over 4. And that's my answer to the problem here. Now this looks like a sine graph to me, and it's a sine with an amplitude of 4. And I know that because it's traveling like a normal sine, and it stops here at 8 pi. So to figure out what my omega is in front of the x, I'm going to take my uh, formula. So my, I'm going to take my cycle, which is going to be 8 pi, and I'm going to set that equal to 2 pi over omega and do a little quick flip-flop of these two right there. So my, um, again, using cross-multiplication strategy here, so my omega is going to be equal to 2 pi divided by 8 pi. And so uh, the pi simplify, and the 2 eighths simplifies to 1 fourth. Because this graph is going slower um, than a normal uh, sine wave, because a normal sine wave would end at uh, 2 pi, which would look really, really skinny like this. But it's really slower now, so that's that's why it looks that way. Again, check these out on your graphing calculators. It really kind of helps. 
All right, now in problem, this third problem here, these aren't numbered, sorry about that. In this third problem here, um, it looks like this is a negative cosine. So I'm going to put a negative, uh, let's see, 3 here, cosine. Let's see, negative 3 cosine. And what we have here is, uh, and I notice that because it's starting right there at the bottom. So negative 3 cosine, and what we will do is we will look at how, if it has any kind, because of the cycle, you'll notice it goes from here to 4 pi. All right, so if it goes from there to 4 pi, what we're going to do is we are going to take a look at the period, which is 4 pi, and the 4 pi is equal to, let's see here, uh, 2 pi over omega. And we're going to flip-flop these two, so my omega is equal to 2 pi divided by 4 pi. The pi simplify, and so this leaves me with 1 half, because it's going half as fast as it actually should, because a normal uh, wave would go, you know, something like this, and it would be done in that amount of time. All right, so there's your answer to this problem. Okay, so here we have a negative sine, so this is negative sine, sorry, negative 2, sine and you'll notice that this uh this is ending here at 4 this is one cycle right there at 4 so we're going to take our 4 set that equal to 2 pi over omega and then we're going to do some quickly uh quick little swift swapping of these right there so my omega is equal to 2 pi over 4 which is going to be 1 half pi or pi over 2 x so there's my answer for this problem. All right, now this one down here is a little hard to see. Uh, this is a 1, if you can't tell. So that right there is a 1. I'll make it a little bit larger. And uh, this right there is 3 fourths. So this is 3 fourths. This is going to be sine. And it's going to be, now we've got to figure out what my x is right there. And we're going to take our omega. Uh, sorry, our 2 pi over omega, and set that equal to 1 right there, which is the end of that cycle. I'm going to flip-flop that, so 2 pi is equal to omega, because we move that to the denominator, 2 pi divided by 1 is just 2 pi, so sine is going to be multiplied by 2 pi times x. And finally, here we have another negative cosine problem, so this is negative 5 halves cosine, Negative 5 halves cosine is going to then the full cycle between here and here. That full cycle is going to be 2 units big, so therefore we're going to have a 2 is equal to 2 pi over omega. We flip-flop the omega and the 2, so omega is equal to 2 pi over 2, so my omega is pi x.